Good morning, class. Today we're going to be discussing plant structure and plant growth. And we've got an outline on the board in terms of the topics that we're going to be covering today. First of all, in terms of plant structure, we're going to look at the hierarchy of the organization of plant structure. And we're going to look specifically at the organs, the tissues, and the cells associated with plant structure, which perform specialized functions for the plants. Plants are very amazing creatures, very exciting. You know, a lot of us maybe not pay attention to plants, but without them, we cannot survive. And so, in terms of the organization, plants from the aerial parts are utilizing the light and carbon dioxide as nutrients that they need for photosynthesis. And in terms of the underground parts, the root system, they're utilizing water and minerals from the soil. So as we look at the organization, keep in mind uh, the functionality of these structural components of the plant in terms of the most important process, in my opinion, photosynthesis, which is providing us with the food that we all are dependent on, uh, the energy that we need. Okay, we're also going to look at the function in terms of uh, structure and growth. So the, the structure is organized so that the plant can grow in a particular manner. And we're going to talk about a type of cells in plants that are really responsible for plant growth. These are called meristems or meristematic tissue. It sounds like a shoot system. It sounds like the stem. But it's actually an area of actually dividing cells. And we'll talk about the different types of meristems today and basically how they contribute to the growth of the shoot system and the root system. And then plant grows in two ways. They grow vertically. They grow taller. That is referred to as primary growth. And then they also grow wider. The, the, the stem gets thicker, uh, increasing girth, increasing width, and that's secondary growth. And we will discuss that today as well. So let's get started. In terms of the organization, the three organs associated with plants uh, are the three uh, organization of the plants, so the organ system, and then the tissues, and then the cells. But we need to define organ, in case you forgot. An organ or a group of tissues formed together that serves a specialized function. And in the plants, the three organ types are the roots, the stems, and the leaves. That's the organs within the plant, root stems, and leaves. Now, as we look at the root stems and leaves, we're going to talk about specifically the flowering plants today, which are known as angiosperms. And really, you have two categories of angiosperms. We got monocots versus eudicots. So as we talk about the organization, the structural organization of the root stems and leaves, we we'll also look at the difference in the organization of the monocot flowering plants versus the dicots in terms of these organs, root stems and leaves, okay? When we look at the tissues, there are three major plant tissue types. We've got dermal, which is the covering tissue. Dermal tissue is the covering tissue. It's kind of like the skin of the plant. It's analogous to the skin. In our bodies, the skin covers the body. So the dermal tissue is the covering tissue of the plant. And on the leaf, there's some specialization on the stem. There's some specialization in terms of the dermal tissue, uh, specifically to prevent water loss, dehydration. That's one of the major uh, obstacles that plants face on land, desiccation. So there's some specialization in the dermal tissue to account for that. We've got vascular tissue, which is a transportation tissue, the transportation vessels within the plant. This is what enables plants to transition from water and existence in water where they're dependent on water for transport onto land, terrestrial plants, which develop their own vascular tissue, enabling them to transport nutrients throughout the plant. And then we've got the ground tissue, which is the packing, the supporting tissue that's just there to help support the structure of the plant and for storage and so forth when the plant makes its food. The ground tissue is areas where you have a lot of the storage taking place, a lot of support, and a lot of the metabolic activities that are going on within the plant takes place in the areas of the ground tissue type. Now, as we look at the cells in plants, there are really five categories of plant cells that covers all the tissue type, okay? 
So we're looking at organs being the largest structure. Within the organs, we've got tissues. And within the tissues, we've got cells, the cellular level. And so these are the different types of cells that we can find in a plant. First of all, we have some unspecialized cells that are the most abundant throughout the plant in the ground tissue, known as parenchyma cells. Parenchyma cells. Primary cell walls, very undifferentiated. A lot of metabolic activities takes place in the parenchyma cells of the plant. Then we have cholenchyma cells. Cholenchyma are slightly thicker cell walls than the parenchyma cells. They predominantly uh, allow the plant to have more stability, more support, but still flexibility for growth. And then we have the most differentiated of the three, sclerenchyma cells secondary cell walls and there's a material called lignin that lignifies the cell walls makes it very rigid very tough structurally tough and those are the sclerenchyma cells found in the plants and you know in terms of secondary growth you would find a lot of sclerenchyma cells because the plants and has to support the height and the weight of the massive plants as they grow Okay, then we have a type of cells known as xylem vessels containing two types of cells. Xylem vessels are made up of trachids and vessel elements. So there are two types of cells found in the xylem vessels. And the xylem vessels are responsible for transporting water and minerals in the plant. So we're basically talking about absorbing the water and minerals out of the soil out into the root system, it gets directed into the xylem vessels and it, then it gets transported up the plants, predominantly to the leaf area where photosynthesis is going to take place. So these vessels, the xylem vessels, have two types of conducting cells that are responsible for transporting, again, water and minerals. Then we've got the phloem cells. Phloem is made up of sieve tube elements These are conducting vessels of the, the phloem vessels and companion cells, which are neighboring cells that basically nourishes the sieve tube elements, keep them alive and keep them healthy over time, supporting but the conducting vessels of the sieve tube elements. The phloem is responsible for transporting sugar and other organic nutrients that the plant makes in the leaves area of photosynthesis and transports it to other areas of the plant where it's stored, predominantly in the roots, but plants have modification sometimes, and you may have some organs of the stem that store food made uh, in the leaves, transported by the phloem vessels, okay? So organizationally, plants are organized into their, recapping their organs, their tissues, and their cells, structure being related to functions. These organs are nicely specialized for the function that they serve. The root system and the shoot system adapted for the lifestyle of the plant. Remember, plants cannot take themselves up and change location. Once rooted, that's where they're going to live, that's where they're going to reside, and they have to survive in that environment. They're very, very adaptable, and their organ system and shoot system really speaks to that adaptation in terms of the organization uh, which we just talked about.